there demons, it's a boy Cody and I'm back with a brand new set of 10 things you need to know. This week, we're celebrating a very special anniversary, 76 years since the premiere of Waiting for Lefty at the legendary group theater in New York. Now, I know 76 is an odd year to honor, but the 75th was, well... <laughs> So 76 it is. Waiting for Lefty is considered to be one of the great American dramas of the 20th century. If you've ever been to drama school, you've probably heard of this one. But how much do you actually know? Let's get on with the list. Waiting for Lefty is a play written by American playwright Clifford Odets. It was written in 1934. It premiered at the Civic Repertory Theater on January 6th, 1935. The premiere performance cost about $8 to produce, or $155.92 in today's dollars. I guess that's still not a lot of money. The play was inspired by a 40-day long cab driver strike and the resulting riots in New York City in February 1934. The strike was motivated by low wages, high taxes, and municipal support going towards the cab companies rather than the drivers themselves. And with over 30,000 hacks working in the city, there were more drivers than passengers. The strike was a violent and bloody affair, with multiple incidents of demonstrating cabbies savagely attacking scab chauffeurs, independent drivers, and their cars indiscriminately, resulting in smashed windshields, slashed tires, and cracked skulls, both driver and passenger alike. The titular character of Lefty was based on a real man, former New York cab driver Samuel Orner. Orner had been fired for not making enough money on a particular night shift. so he decided to take a stand against those unjust working conditions. Now, spoiler alert! In the play, Lefty never makes it to the meeting. He is found dead offstage behind the car barn, shot in the head, presumably by minions of the cab companies or possibly even the union's own leadership. This shocking act of violence galvanizes the union to reject the owner's offer and vote to strike. Thankfully for Mr. Orner, he was never shot, but he did nearly miss the crucial strike vote as he was found by his friends drugged and unconscious the night of the meeting. They did manage to rouse him and get him there in time to reject the owner's offer and, you guessed it, strike. But after 40 days, the strike was over and further efforts to fight ownership petered out. None of the demands put forward by the taxi driver's union had been won. The collapse of the strike was attributed to a number of different factors, including the cab companies importing gangsters from Chicago to fight striking workers, to police riding and driving in scab cars to provoke attacks at picket lines, to tactical mistakes and miscalculations made by union leadership. Now this strike is credited with inspiring a few elements of Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal, which was signed into law a year later, as well as inspiring the state of New York to revamp their taxi regulations into the medallion system. But for all of their sacrifice and bloodshed, those striking drivers saw no immediate change. On the other hand, the premiere of Waiting for Lefty was a smashing success, with the cast taking 28 separate curtain calls. Broadway critic Henry Senber attended the premiere performance. Of it, he said, One left the theater Sunday evening with two convictions. The first was that one witnessed an event of historical importance in what is academically referred to as the drama of contemporary American scene. The other was that a dramatist to be reckoned with had been discovered. It has not been announced just where and when Waiting for Lefty will be presented again, but you can rest assured it will be soon. A play like this does not die. After running for 144 performances on Broadway, theaters all across the country requested the rights to mount their own production of Waiting for Lefty, citing that audiences seem to connect with a resonant story and natural sounding dialogue. And how could it not sound authentic? Samuel Orner himself proclaimed that. Odets must have taken notes because so many of the lines in Waiting for Lefty were the same as in the meeting, almost word for word. I mean, talk about art imitating life. Which brings us to our final thing you need to know about Waiting for Lefty. And it's that in the 1950s, while testifying in front of the House Un-American Activities Committee, Clifford Odets denied that he had based this play on that strike. And he further denied that he had ever been to a union meeting of cab drivers. Odets said, it is just something I kind of made up. I didn't know anything about a taxi cab strike. I have never been near a strike in my entire life. Which is kind of funny considering how the original subtitle of the play was called 
a play in six scenes based on the New York taxi strike of February 1934. Hmm. So that's it. 10 Things You Need to Know About Waiting for Lefty, a play whose premiere got an audience full of cultured, wealthy patrons of the arts to stand up on their feet and chant strike, strike, strike alongside the actors, inspiring them to answer the clarion call for workers' rights and equity before they, you know, went home, forgot about everything, and just carried on with their normal lives. What's that old saying, the more things change? <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, remember to smash that like button, subscribe to 10 Things You Need to Know About, and ring that little bell so that you are notified the moment a new episode drops. And please let us know in the comments below what kind of impact you think this seminal work of American drama had on our society, or not. Do you think this play affected any real change? Or are we all still waiting? Thanks again. We'll see you next time on 10 Things You Need to Know About. Homer Simpson, Windows, Boris, Yeltsin, Dipesh Mode. World Wide Web, Hello, Clarice, Bush, Dahmer, Nintendo. Mandela Free, Twin Peaks, and the World Credits. You're gonna see the show, yeah, 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 waiting for Lefty, but 65 years later, you're gonna like it, yeah, 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 there's gonna be a big musical number, but maybe not, but you're gonna have a good time, yeah. Have right. you no sense of decency, sir? That's totally going to be. All right. <laughs>